really so long ago and it's now in Denver and I'm going for ages and ages. Sophia or see wisdom stand up right. Come
church in the sweet child of it. It's been a good day. It's been a good day so far. The Lord sent them out and bring them in. So here you are. <coughs> Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Words taken from the Holy Gospel read at today's Divine Liturgy from the 17th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy what I'd like for us to look at in today's reading, we read it this, this time of year, every year, as we're getting ready to, when we're getting ready to get ready to start Great Lent, we read about these ten lepers, whom Jesus encounters uh, as he's entering the village. And in this group of ten, one of them is a Samaritan because we, do, we know that because of the way he's dressed. The Samaritans and the Jews knew each other by the way they dressed and they hated each other. And so this one, though, that, that comes back is a Samaritan. And to the, to the other nine, that means he's kind of an outsider. Even though there have been ten outsiders from society, up until now, because they are outcasts, they are the untouchable, they are the unclean, they are the ones that get to live out near the cemetery, and, uh, and can never, never come near civilization. But they lifted up their voices as they saw Jesus, because they had heard of him, they knew he was coming, they wanted to partake of the great ministry that he performed, and so they, they said to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That's the Jesus prayer. So I don't where to do it. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It's the prayer we all say as our daily prayer, as our momentarily prayer, every moment of the day. We have to pray when, we, when we're, our mind wants to wander off into God knows what pastures. We bring it back with the Jesus prayer. Spoken very, very quietly in our heart. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me as sinner. The prayer of the public as he came into the temple to pray. Lord, Lord have mercy. Mercy. Your, your healing oil. Pour it upon me. That's what that's what mercy is. It lay us on the Greek. It's the holy oil of God's anointing. You see, so that's exactly what our Lord did for these ten who asked it. They asked mercy and they got mercy. He saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest, which is required by the uh, Jewish law that if you had been cured of this awful, awful disease of leprosy, before you could return to society, you had to go to the temple and show yourself to the priest, indicate that you had been a leper, that you had been cleansed, and, <coughs> and give a little, little tithe for, for the service. <coughs> so go do the, do the ritual. Do what's required. And so the ten of them took off to do just that. But this one, with whom I think we can identify when this one realizes that he's not quite finished Jesus' part of the healing. You know, he'll, he'll take care of the priests when it's their turn. Jesus still has, has something that, that needs to be done, and so he comes back. And he thanks the God in the flesh that is our Lord Jesus. Thank you. Praising God with a loud voice. And he fell at the at, on his face at Jesus' feet, shouting, Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank
thank you. And that's what I'd like for us as, as Orthodox Christians and as potential Orthodox Christians, as old time Orthodox Christians, I'd like us to keep in mind as we go about our daily living out of the faith. And that's what the faith is, it's a living out, as the lepers now are going to live out a different kind of existence than they've been having as lepers. They're in now full bodied again, members of the of the community, of the body of those who believe. And so when there's one who does give thanks, let him be our model. Orthodoxy is a religion of thanksgiving, you might say. We, um, we acknowledge, don't we, that we fall short of the mark. We acknowledge that we're sinners. We acknowledge that when we come up for communion, we acknowledge, I am the chief of sinners, as St. Paul said. We acknowledge all of that, but we don't dwell so much on that as, as the lepers focus on their leprosy. We don't focus so much on how bad off we might be, but rather on what a hope that faith in this Lord Jesus Christ can be for us. And doesn't our Lord say that to this outsider at the end of the, the gospel reading? Your faith has made you well. Your faith, Samaritan outsider. Your belief God can do for you what you ask him to do. And it's only right, isn't it? I mean, we say that we're orthodox. We give right glory. Ortho, right doxa, right glory. That we give right glory to this God who brings us, unworthy though we might feel, who brings us into the kingdom. We come to liturgy together filled with joy, and we raise the gospel book, the good news. The priest, first thing he does, he raises the gospel book and says, Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And by extension, blessed are, are we who are part of this kingdom, who are the adopted children of God the Father. Now we could spend some time, but we won't, we could spend some time criticizing the nine. It's more fun this to criticize than to simply humbly give praise and thanks. So those nine, uh, they should should have given thanks too, shouldn't they of? And I suppose in their way they did. I know this, and I don't know if this works for you, but I know this. When I pray fervently for God's blessing, for God's healing of people, myself, the world, people nowadays, there are plenty of people to pray for. Almost everybody's getting COVID. Pray for them for a moment. My father, Ryan's wife. Spencer just came through. Elijah's mother. Plenty of people to pray for. But my, my habit is to become so happy when our Lord grants me the mercies that I have asked for. But I focus more on my own joy than I do on what ought to be done first, and that is give thanks. That's why I'm preaching this sermon, because I, I'm preaching to myself as well, as to the choir. See, we need to do that, because we claim that that's what we do, that we give right glory, and right glory is thanks. 
at the beginning of the anaphora, the, the part of the, uh, uh, of the holy service that leads up to the uh, changing of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, the very first thing the priest does is venerate the icon of Christ who comes in glory at the end of the world and say, let us give thanks unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. In Greek, Eucharistimon, Eucharist. We speak of the Holy Eucharist, the Holy giving of thanks. What is it we give thanks to God with? We give thanks to God with his own body. So let us let us think of these things as we go about our daily lives, our prayer life, our faith life. Your uh, faith has made you well. Your faith will keep you well. And may God bless us all in that faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The servants of God, that they may have mercy, life, peace, health, peace, health, salvation, and visitation, pardon and remission of their sins. The servants of God, Brian, Ramona, Tatiana, Barbara, Kay, Anthony and Terry, Anka, Douglas and Catherine, the parishioners of St. George, Wichita, of St. Mary's, Wichita, St. Basil, Kansas City, St. Peter and Paul, Topeka, St. George, Harney, the servants of God, Jim, Tracy, Anna, Carwin, David, Daniel, Elias and Elena, Paul, Erica, Ilya, Alexandria, Isabella, Ayana, Stephen and Madeline, Wil Wilfred and Donna, Deacon Joseph, Rebecca, JJ, and Anna, the servant of God, Donovan, and all of those who are sick and suffering, and all of those who have asked our prayers for the servants of God, Archbishop John and Metropolitan Paul, that they may be released from captivity. The Lord God, remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Servants of God, departed this life and hope of resurrection and life everlasting. The servants of God, Metropolitan Philip Bishop on tomb, who ordained me to the priesthood. Cornelia, Erwin, Margaret, Julius, Valerica, Florentine. The servants of God, James and Sophia, John, George, Lillian, Virginia, Kathy, Sophie, and Sagan, and all of those who are dying at this moment and have no one else to pray for them, 
and those who are dying at the hands of terrorists and of COVID. The Lord God, remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and as a man. And was crucified also for us under the conscious Pilate and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in the most holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism of the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.